All right, good morning, everybody. Kind of simple to see what the situation we're going to be running into today. Uh, here's a look at the visible satellite picture. I've got the radar as well as current temperatures on. You can see the temperatures have soared into the upper 60s and low 70s across the area. As we take a look at the dew points, they're in the 50s, but there's a big surge of 60 degree dew points down to our south, which are going to be moving to the north here shortly. Now, as we look back to the west, it's kind of an interesting line. We've got a tornado watch to the north right to the North Carolina border. We've got a tornado watch to the west that comes right up to the North Carolina border. This watch right here is until 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, so the mountains will likely see a watch probably extended east as we go into the afternoon. As we take a look at the one to the north, this one is actually in effect till 4 p.m. So that kind of gives you an idea of the timeline for those areas. The uh, front actually extends all the way back down into Louisiana. So we're not worried about the stuff to the north. That's going to pass up there. It's this stuff back to the west that's going to be kind of interesting. As we take a look at the uh, Storm Prediction Center outlook for today, you can see the red right there. That's where we have the moderate risk and everything you see in that kind of yellow is a slight risk. So they kind of whittled back the moderate risk back towards uh, central Tennessee, northern Georgia, and Alabama. And part of the reason uh, they did that is because the main piece of energy is actually back towards the west. You can see this is, a, let me turn the radar off here so we can see these a little better. This is the main piece of energy sitting back here over Arkansas and southern Missouri. That's going to swing through and really crank up things around here, but also uh, to our west where we'll see the highest risk for uh, tornadoes. Something we look at is called the significant tornado parameter. And as you take a look at that right now, that is the highest over Chattanooga, Tennessee. So right in there is the area, we'll turn the radar back on, that we're probably going to see any kind of cells develop. Now, how I picture this thing unfolding today is this squall line moves to the east. We're going to watch ahead of it to see if we see any little cells develop. These discrete cells are the ones that will rotate. Now, within the main line, we may see some segments rotate like up in here, these little Boeing segments. But I think the primary threat is going to end up being straight line winds with this with some isolated tornado potential. So let's take a look at some of the uh, future runs of the models here. Uh, this is a, our, our HRW model. This is a very high resolution model and we'll go into the afternoon hours. We'll put the future, this is basically future radar. Um, and you can see right there, this is about 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, and you can see the broken line. Now, the thing that concerns me is not the main line, it's anything that develops out ahead of it. So at 7 o'clock, this thing's going to be entering our area as we go out a little bit quicker, it consolidates, it looks like, into a squall line as it shifts to the east, which actually means more straight line wind damage, but less of a tornado threat. But right in here, I'm going to watch carefully for anything developing out ahead of it. Let's look at the NAM. Uh, the NAM's kind of all over the place. It actually is much slower. It has the main front back here. But even though this doesn't look very impressive, this is a little bit lower resolution you can see that we still got some precipitation out ahead of the main line. The one thing we're going to watch for is the amount of uh, basically shear we have in the atmosphere. And you can see this is shear. The darker purple means the higher the shear. So there was a lot of shear associated with this line moving in. And that wind shear can come in the form of two ways. It can be directional shear, which means wind's changing direction with height, or speed shear, which means it's changing speed with height. So the, either one is dangerous, but the one that we worry about is directional shear because that means we can get some rotation. As you take a look at the amount of a surface cape, this is the amount of potential energy there is in the atmosphere. And there's a good swath between 500 and 1,000 um, joules per kilogram, which is a measure of cape. So there, there, we've got the instability, we've got the shear, we've got everything we really need to get some severe weather to develop here. The only thing we're waiting for is this thing to kind of develop and move our way. Of course, once the watch is issued, we'll keep you up to date. I think that will likely happen sometime early this afternoon. They're going to have to do something with these two watches because this one goes to four, this one goes to two, and this line is going to approach the end of the watch box here shortly. So we'll likely see this expanded to the east. Not sure yet if it's going to be a severe thunderstorm watch or tornado watch because if we don't see any more rotating storms, they may just opt with the severe thunderstorm watch. Doesn't mean there won't be tornadoes, but that just means the primary threat is going to be straight line winds. Of course, we'll keep you up to date throughout the afternoon. We'll start our cut-ins starting at 1.30 on News Channel 36 and, of course, complete details starting at 4 o'clock. Have a great Monday.